dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,300 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Ruth Warwick in Romance, Incorporated. United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where each week the great names of the cinema world join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Beautiful Ruth Warwick is our proudly we hailed star and provides a gay portrayal as the daughter of Wall Street's current financial giant in a comedy, Romance Incorporated. Our curtain for Act One will rise in a moment. Here now is Wendell Niles with an important message from your government. Many young men are finding that an Army or Air Force career is just what they've wanted. They're learning a special skill or trade. They're finding many opportunities for further education. They're working with other young men who have similar aims in life. In the Army or Air Force, they have security. And above all, they have the respect of their countrymen and the world because they are serving their country and mankind in the pursuit of peace. Now back to our producer. It's curtain time, and here's Act One of Romance Incorporated, starring Ruth Warwick as Kate. <laughs> High atop an imposing edifice at a strategic point on Wall Street are the offices of Bertram Dutton and Company. Groups of office workers are conferring in whispers. Secretaries are tiptoeing about their tasks. Even the ticker tape is quiet. In fact, it's the quiet before the storm. For even now, mutters of anger are coming from the office, or should I say, the den of the man they call the old wolf of Wall Street, Bertram Dutton himself. In this mood... No normal person would dare approach the sanctum sanctorum, but the brash young lady who strides through the outer office is by no means a normal person. Oh, well, the confounded... Why, Father, how you talk. Oh, it's you. Mm, seems to be. May I come in? You are in. Uh, may I sit down? If you must stay. I see you're in one of your good moods today. Did it ever enter your head that this is a place of business? It entered. Then I take it you have business to transact. Correct. Such as? There is a matter of my allowance. Mm. Would a check take care of it? How did the market close? Up. Oh. In that case, a check will take care of it. Oh, Catherine, my dear. You're looking lovely, as usual. She should. It's all she's got to do. Are you ready to go to dinner, Dudley? Well, Dudley tenders I... his regrets, baby. But he's going to be in a very important business conference for a couple of hours. <laughs> well, it's quite evident that Lincoln's proclamation didn't apply to rising young stockbrokers. Flippancies will get you nowhere. Can't this wait until tomorrow? I'm leaving town early in the morning. I won't be back until Monday. Well, what's so urgent? Why don't you run along, my dear? I'll give you a ring in the morning. This is business. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. I will make a supreme effort. All this noise is a waste of time. We're not getting anywhere. Dudley, you go and get the file on Martin Motors. And don't bring one of those confounded puzzles back with you. What are you up to, Father? I'll explain. In words of one syllable. This is the neatest deal I've ever worked out. Ah, uh, wait. First, let us dispose of the matter of Dudley. Indeed. I have been engaged to Dudley for 18 months, during which you have never given him enough time off to get married. Now it's come to the point where I can't even borrow him for dinner. Perhaps I'm awfully slow, but could it be that you don't want us to get married? That could be. List me reasons. He's too dull. He's in a rut. He does crossword puzzles. What you need is a man who'll sweep you off your feet, a man who's boss. A man who'll call you Kate and make you like it. What I need is beside the point. Ah, uh, here's the file. Ah, uh, baby, this company is going places, and in the near future, according to my calculations. Which are, as a rule, infallible? Mm-hmm, <laughs> sound observation. In simple terms, there are one million shares of stock in the company. We own 499,000 shares. Unfortunately, J.C. Pierce, the old thief, 
Bought up 499000 Even with my limited knowledge of monetary matters, I understand that he who gets the remaining 2,000 shares controls the company? A shrewd deduction. The point is that we've got to find the owner before J.C. does, so we can get it at our own price. We have to buy it before J.C. starts bidding against us and forces the price up. Is it honest? It's business. Ah, there are times when I agree with those who call you the wolf of Wall Street. There are times when such tactics result in a mink coat, like the one you got for Christmas. There's no point in prolonging this discussion. I see that I am to play second fiddle to 2,000 shares of Martin Motors. Oh, but my dear... Tell you what I'll do. If you and Dudley, separately or collectively, can get hold of that stock, I'll give Dudley a month off and stake you to a honeymoon. Well, Bertram, I have a few ideas that might work out. I wonder... This is your floor, sir. Oh, thanks. A uh, down? Yes, ma'am. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I changed my mind. My good man, when you recover enough to close your mouth, will you kindly get off my foot? Why, of all things, I never expected to see you again. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't. This is wonderful. I- I'm taking you to dinner, of course. Uh, you are obviously confused. You mean you don't remember me? Well, should I? Of course you should. The The USO. The USO? I was a lonely G.I. ready to ship out, and you, well, you were an angel. I was? Well, yes, you was. I mean, were. Well, don't you remember? Patrick. Patrick Halliday. Well, there were so many G.I.s. Oh, look, you don't know how many times I've wished that I could repay you for just talking to me that night. Now that I have the chance, well, how about it? Dinner, I mean. Well, I... Wonderful. Come on. <laughs> My customary line, or are you a silent dancer? <laughs> Rattle off. You dance very well. You lead very well. Perhaps you were tuned. Oh, heaven forbid. Well, say, you were uh, not married or anything, are you? I make it a rule never to answer impertinent questions. Well, there's an exception to every rule. No. No what? No, I'm not married or anything. Why not? Well, maybe I've never been asked. You've been asked all right. The young man talks flattering words. The young man talks facts. He has to. He's a professor. Oh? What do you teach? English literature. The romantic age. Uh, And speaking of romance... (laughs) Which we weren't. I'll only be in New York a short time. And you want me to show you the town? That would indeed be charming of you. Tell me, Professor... What caused you to forsake the sacred halls of learning? Bertram Dutton and Company. Dutton? What do you have to do with Dutton? Business, strictly business. I have no intention of associating with the Park Avenue slum crowd. Well, that almost sounds nasty. I've heard of his methods of doing business. They don't call him the Wolf of Wall Street for nothing. Oh, he's not so bad. You know, unfortunately, my memory for faces is superior to my memory for names. What do they call you? Catherine. Kate. Hmm? What goes with? Uh, uh, Hutton. Well, Miss Hutton, what do you know of Bertram Dutton? Well, uh, I I went to school with his daughter. Hmm? It caused mix-ups no end. Did you like her? Well, confidentially, she got under my skin. Hmm. Penny? I'm wondering how to lure you out onto the terrace for the duration of a reasonably private kiss. Well, you might ask how I feel. Very well. How do you feel? Stifled. Let's get some air. Good morning. Hmm. What time did you get in last night? Oh, I don't know. I didn't punch the time clock. What are you up so early for? Maybe I wanted to see you off. Then again, maybe I'm after the worm. What's his name? Name of Patrick Halliday. Do I know him? I don't think so. How'd you meet him? I picked him up, <laughs> sort of, in an elevator. It was mutual. Hmm. Maybe hope for you, after all. Why, Father, such thoughts. <laughs> hello? Good morning, my dear. Oh, hello, Dudley. Everything's going according to plan. It's all set. I'll tell you about it at lunch. No. I beg your pardon? I said no. Well, uh... Dinner, perhaps? I'm afraid I'm going to be very busy at dinner, Dudley. Yes, but my dear. Very busy indeed. (laughs) 
Kate, this can't go on. How long have we known each other? Mm -hmm. Oh, about 33 hours, 30 minutes and 14 seconds. I'm a firm believer in speed. I don't like long engagements. Hi, could it be that you're proposing to me? Could be. That, do you know, I'm a girl who believes in old-fashioned courtship. In that case, first will come the courtship. When will it commence? Now, this very minute. Very well. I'm waiting. Oh. There. Now that we've dispensed with the courtship, we'll get married. Well, it's a matter that needs thought. I'll give you precisely 60 seconds to give it thought. Oh, I don't need that much time. Your answer is... Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You, uh, you have a father. Uh, yes. All right, then, the next logical step would be to get his permission. Oh, he's rather a lovable old bear, and also he's out of town, and besides, he's fond of surprises. Oh, so am I. Well, what are we waiting for? couple come to get married? Uh, it's not too late, is it? No, never too late. You sure you don't want to think it over? Oh, we've thought. Yeah, think again. Well, can't you just skip the advice and marry us? Oh, suppose I can. Come in, come in. Ah, uh, it'll be two dollars in advance. <laughs> Trusting little soul, isn't he? Uh, don't suppose you got a license. Oh, great Scott, no. No, don't get excited. <laughs> just a little joke. Don't need one here in Greenwich. Very funny. <laughs> yeah, here's a register. Sign your names in residence and whether you've ever taken the fatal step before. I'm going to wake up Ma on the rumor. There'll be your witnesses. For next two dollars, Ma will play the wedding march on the piano. Hey, never mind the piano. Just get on with the marrying. <laughs> Told your horses, honey. You'll wish you weren't so impatient for so long. Crazy old coot. <laughs> Here, baby, sign your name. All right. Didn't they teach you to write in school? Hmm? It's the funniest looking age I ever saw. Oh, a nerd. Hey, hey, look out. Oh, you spilled ink on it. I'll never be able to prove who I married. Doesn't matter. I'll have a new name in a minute. Ma, the room will be down to Jiffy. Everything set? Seems like. You got the ring? Ring? Oh. Part of the ceremony, Sonny. With this ring, I be wear. That's what you repeat after me. Then you put it on your girl's finger and... Bang, it's done. Oh, but Kate, I, I haven't got a ring. Oh, it doesn't matter. No reason to get excited. I just happen to have a few rings on hand, just in case. Uh, you own the rice concession, too? No, Ma has that. <laughs> uh, you can pick out the ring while we're waiting for the witnesses. Uh, you wouldn't have one which sells in the neighborhood of $2. Just so happens I have. Well, don't you have a better one? Oh, I don't want a better one, Patrick. Just so happens I wouldn't want to get him out of his $2 rut. We pause briefly from our story, Romance Incorporated, starring Ruth Warwick, for an important message from your government. I'm wondering if you young men are familiar with the Air Force Aviation Career Plan. It's not complicated, and it's a great chance to start your career in the fast-growing field of aviation. If you're a high school graduate, you're eligible. And here's what that entitles you to. If you enlist for three years, you can choose the aviation skill you'd like to learn and listen. There are no strings attached. If not accepted for the Air Force Technical School you have selected, you are not required to enlist. That's fair enough, isn't it? Once accepted, you are guaranteed the Air Force technical training you have chosen. And remember, there are 40 different aviation skills to choose from. Drop in at your local recruiting station today, men, and ask about the Air Force Aviation Career Plan. The Air Force representatives there will be glad to talk to you. rises on Act Two of Romance Incorporated, starring Ruth Warwick as Kate. In matters of finance, Bertram Dutton, the old wolf of Wall Street, had never been bested. Even now, he was sure that he could get to the owner of that 2,000 shares of stock before his bitterest rival did. For the man who got there first would control a company with a big future. In matters of romance, Bertram had also never been bested. He had been short-selling his daughter's suitors for years. But this time, Bertram was caught short. He was so deep in matters of finance that he paid little attention to matters of romance. 
Kate made a decision and married Patrick. And now they are riding around in her car. That was the nicest honeymoon I ever had. What? Oh, well, it was. Even though you had to conjure up the food and furnish the transportation? Uh, cooking was the only subject I ever passed in. Kate, I, uh, I have to talk to you. Oh, talk on. Marriage founded on deception is a tricky business. Oh, I suppose you want a full confession. Oh, I'm confessing. Hmm? You see, I was never in a USO. I was a major in the Air Corps. Oh, well, I'm confessing, too. I was never in a USO, either. Nurse's aid. Why, Kate, I'm ashamed of you. Well, you picked me up. Uh, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I have a surprise for you. Uh, what kind of a surprise? Wedding present. Some stock, not worth very much. Oh? Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a lot, though. 2,000 shares. Oh, my. It's a concern called Martin Motors. You've probably never heard of it, but it's yours. Oh, my goodness. You happy? Uh, very happy. Do you think your father will approve of me? Oh, I know so. Hey. Hey, that's a police car. That's all right. It's going the other way. Well, if I were you, I'd slow down. Well, stop looking back. You act as if you're wanted. Oh, don't be silly. How could I be wanted? Okay, don't tax my patience. All right, so you're intuitive. Oh, evidently. Good morning, officer. What can I do for you? All right, you get out of the car and keep your hands up. Are you kidding? Quit stalling, buddy. I'm the nervous type. Take a look at the girl, Joe. Hey, uh, stop pointing that thing at me. It might go off. Do as you're told and it won't. That's the girl, all right. I radio headquarters and tell him we picked him up. What's this all about? He wants to know what it's all about, Joe. Fancy that. Get in the patrol car, buddy. Now, wait a minute. In, mister. Joe will ride with the lady. Patrick. Darling, I'm innocent. Believe me, I don't even know what I've done. Lucky for you, your father returned home early from his trip, miss. But, but how do... Your license plate. Your father had it broadcast all over the state. But it's all over now. Terrible experience. Terrible. <sighs> that all depends on your viewpoint. <laughs> They're coming in now. Police just drove up. Dudley, put down that puzzle. It calms my nerves. Well, All right, stop shoving. Now, what's the big idea? This isn't a police station. We got your kidnapper, Mr. Dutton. Kidnapper? Dutton? Got the comedy, buddy. It'll go easier with you if you confess. We got the goods on you. Oh, somebody's making a big mistake. I didn't kidnap the young lady. I married her. She's, she's my wife. I'm her husband. We're married. What's that? A seven-letter word meaning joined in holy wedlock. It, why, you here. You... <laughs> Kidnapper, uh, you? Uh, careful, boys. He's got something you want. You bet he has. You. Well, I guess we can be going. Come on, Joe. Okay. Well, goodbye. Nice to have met you, boys. My dear Cat. Mrs. Halliday to you, Mrs. Patrick Halliday. Halliday? Well, he's the man who owns the stock. What? He was coming to see me, but he didn't show up. That's why I thought I had the deal sewed up. Oh, I told you to find out who had the stock and get hold of it, baby, but I didn't expect you to go that far. Does Kate work for you? You keep quiet. What have you got to do with it? I'm engaged to her. Well, isn't that just dandy? Isn't it just... Oh, will somebody please answer a few questions before I blow my top? You answer this one. What do you mean by marrying my daughter? Your what? His daughter. Kate. Kate, what is this? Well, well say something. Uh, hello, Patrick. So it's true, that business about your name. Oh, I can explain everything. I've Patrick. heard of your business methods, Dutton, but this really takes the cake. I take it the stock in question is my 2,000 shares of Martin Motors. That's right. Well, you must have spent a lot of time coaching Kate to take your place. And you've done a good job. Looks as if you'd better turn that wolf title over to Miss Wall Street here. Oh, you're jumping to conclusions. Six and six make a dozen. You must have had yourself a real good laugh. I had the crazy idea that you had everything I, I was looking for in a woman, but, well, I was wrong. Because you're not a woman at all. You're a spoiled brat. You're speaking of the woman I love. You're welcome to her, brother. Now, you, you better get out of here. That's just what I was about to do. Well, what about me? You. I wouldn't have you and your millions on a Christmas tree. Oh, don't be a snob. And what about the song? See, your daughter was her wedding present. Patrick, you can't leave me like this. You can't believe that. You can't. Evidently, he can. <laughs> What have you got to say for yourself? Well, I'd like to think of something brilliant. But I think this will be adequate. I've got the stock. 
But I want Patrick. Find him. What? Find him. Get detectives. I want to know where he is because we have unfinished business. You in love with him? Of course. Your taste's improving. Well, I found him. What now? Well, now he's going to get his wedding presents back. What? You're going to take the stock back to him. And you're going to tell him that I had nothing to do with our little scheme. Oh, and you'll both live happily ever after. I wouldn't have him for anything in the world. Well, yesterday you loved him. That was yesterday. Today I despise him. You deliver the stock. That finishes it. What about you? I seek solitude. Where? Oh, aboard the yacht. I'm through with men in general, and Patrick in particular. Get me Captain Connors, will you? I'll hold on. Connors? Bertram, listen. My daughter's coming aboard shortly. She seeks solitude, but I'm going to Shanghai Patrick and get him on the boat. Now, here's what you do. Why don't you admit you acted like a heel? Me a heel? Look, haven't you made enough trouble for me having me shanghaied so that I've missed my train? Why, I'll probably lose my job. Having you shanghaied? Why, you conceited dope. The more distance there is between us, the better I'll like it. That's exactly the way I feel. Then why don't you start swimming? You got me out here, Kate. I'm going to wear the daylights out of you. Wrong. I got you out here. Huh? Are you... You old pirate. Why don't you two do ten rounds and make up? I profit by my mistakes. Oh, you're insufferable. Uh, oh, it never fails. When a woman runs out of words, she always resorts to violence. Oh. I'll take the launch. Someone from the yard club will come after you. Patrick, I hate you. Thanks for the compliment. Goodbye. Hmm. Some mistake in my calculations, no doubt. No doubt. Now, don't you worry, Catherine, my dear. I'm still here. Mm, that's what I was afraid of. Now, 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 you just forget him. Can't you get through your sick head that we're married? Definitely, legally married? Well, would it interest you to know that I've been investigating annulment? It would. Well, after all, he should be happy. He got his money. What did you say? Uh, what Dudley meant was that... Never the... mind what Dudley meant. He said that Patrick got his money. What money? The money for the stock. I told you to give him the stock, Bertram. Oh, yes, yes, so you did. Uh... You didn't say you gave him money instead. So I didn't. I saw no reason for not keeping this stock in the family. Oh, you didn't. Well, get this, Bertram, my lad. The stock is mine, not yours. Kate. Don't you cake me, you old pirate. From the very first day I heard about this deal, you planned to swindle the owner. Business is business. Business. The way you practice it is highway robbery. But this time the old wolf of Wall Street has bitten off more than he can chew. I won't stand around and see you two, Jip Patrick. I'm going to see that he gets what his stock is really worth. I'm going to notify J.C. Pierce, and the stock goes to the highest bidder. You can't do that. No, What I... good reason have you for turning against your own father? I have discovered that honesty is the best policy. Don't be a gibbering idiot. I come from a long line of gibbering idiots. No, that shows what love can do to a woman's intelligence. That's it. I love him. I fell in love with him the first minute he stepped on my foot in the elevator. I didn't know who he was. I let him pick me up. I, I arranged the elopement. I didn't know he had anything to do with the stock until we were coming back from our honeymoon. He doesn't think much of me, and I can't say that I blame him. But he's going to get what's coming to him. He certainly is. Oh, I thought you'd gone. I had. Came back. Why? I forgot something. What? You. Come on. Oh, hey, put me down. Kate, I've been a five sap, but I'm in love with you, and I'm going to make up for it. You what? I'm in love with you. And I was saying... Oh, say no more. Kate, can you picture yourself in a vine-covered cottage with a picket fence and a fireplace cooking a professor's dinner? I can now. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Let's go, honey. There they go, Dudley. And the dividends will be something special. The dividends? What do you mean, Bertrand? The dividends, grandchildren. Of course, I'll be president. It's... What are you talking about? Why, Dudley, I organized this whole thing. I, Burton Dutton, will be president of Romance Incorporated. The Curtain Falls concluding our story, Romance Incorporated. 
Ruth Warwick, our star, will be back for a curtain call following this message from Wendell Niles. Anti-aircraft men are skilled and especially trained. You ex-servicemen who served with any anti-aircraft artillery unit know this. And you are the men the regular Army needs. Right now, there are openings in the Army for you men with previous service in the Triple A's. Yes, and chances for a good grade, in some cases as high as the grade you held at time of discharge, are excellent. It's your chance to get back into anti-aircraft, and one you can't afford to miss. Why don't you drop in at your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station and get the details? Find out if you can qualify. Let the Army recruiters there tell you what grade you can enlist in. An Army career is one of the best today. And you'll enjoy being with your old outfit, the three A's. Make it a point to get in on this fine Army offer as soon as possible. You'll be doing yourself a favor. Now back to the microphone, our star, Ruth Warwick, and our producer. Our star, Ruth Warwick, has been on our show more than anyone else. So it is a double pleasure that we ask her to return for her usual informal chat. Ruth, you seem especially radiant. Could it be, uh... Oh, now, now C.B., you're jumping to conclusion. Uh, but I am excited. Oh, well, tell us about it. Well, I'm going on a much-needed vacation. And in just a few hours, I'll be on my way to Honolulu. So you're heading for the Paradise Isles of the Pacific. Mm-hmm. And I'm thrilled to that. And there's a very special luau that I'm looking forward to. Say, you've already made me envious over the trip without mentioning those famous traditional feasts. But you aren't supposed to use those Hawaiian terms until you return. Oh, well, I've been reading up on them, you know. Uh, how are you going, on the boat? No, I'm going to take the clipper. And you know what? What? In just about uh, 30 seconds now, I'm going to start relaxing for it. So, I shall say, pow for now, C.P. <laughs> you have been reading up. Well, right now, we'll start making this an aloha party. We should have some Hawaiians here. <laughs> That's very nice of you, but I'm in the mood, all right. <laughs> now, if I could only say. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. I'm perfectly happy, and I know I'm going to have a wonderful time. You will with so many fine friends. And incidentally, this show is broadcast over there, so don't forget to set your radio dials our way next week. Oh, I won't. Uh, could you give me a little preview in advance? Next week, Ruth and ladies and gentlemen, that dynamic and highly capable actor, Michael O'Shea, stars in a dramatic play, Whistle Station. He provides action, excitement, and a bit of love interest. You'll enjoy him in an outstanding performance, I'm sure. That's just right. And I'll let the islands provide my atmosphere. Well, here's Paul. Aloha, Ruth, and good flying. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Michael O'Shea in Whistle Station. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. Ruth Warwick appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Gary Day. Music under the direction of Eddie Scrivanek. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>